It's the 1990s, and Radiohead is a creep. They're a weirdo. What the hell are they doing here? They don't belong here. This is also the time when Austin Powers shagged a lot of vagina. The world was introduced to Alan Partridge, and Nintendo did a complete 180 on the whole blood thing when it came to Mortal Kombat 2. Hello, my name is Cyril, and that's just one of the Super Nintendo games that we're going to be talking about as we continue our journey through Super Play's Top 600. This is the show where we're reading the verdicts and counting down every review published in the pages of Super Play magazine. After six weeks and 11 episodes, we're finally at the series finale. This means that we're going to be crowning Super Play's top rated game in this episode. And then, I'm going to jump on a boat and get the hell off this island. Yeah, there are only 50 games standing between me and freedom, so let's dive into the final episode of Super Play's Top 600. Prepare yourself, this is gonna be a big one. We're gonna start out with number 50, Super Probotector, an explosive shoot 'em up that wouldn't be possible on any other system. Fab. Number 49, Act Razor. An extraordinary blend of playstyles that proves against the odds to be extremely addictive and hugely impressive. It's a pity the bosses aren't tougher, however, as in the Japanese version. Otherwise, outstanding. Number 48, NHL 96. Every year, it keeps getting better. Whether there are enough improvements to warrant previous purchasers shelling out again is debatable. But for the rest of us, this is a top sports sim. Number 47, Solstice 2, Equinox. If you can cope with its faults, and they are copable with, Solstice 2 is an extremely enjoyable arcade adventure with lovely graphics, brilliant sound, and some progressively involving and addictive gameplay. Highly recommended. Number 46, Vortex. More chippage would have led to an even bigger and thus better game, but it's difficult to fault what's here. Vortex boasts marvelous 3D with only the tiniest time lag as you play, as well as incredible surround sound. It's great fun once you master it. Number 45, Legend of the Mystical Ninja. An all-time classic Super Nintendo game that we've been desperately hoping would come out in the UK. And now it has. Number 44, Panel de Pon. Brimming with options, heady with playability, and steeped in challenge, this will turn minutes into hours and hours into days. Addictive stuff. Number 43, Spectre. A simple and stunning tank combat game. With five modes to play, four of which are two players, it'll last as long as your Super Nintendo. Tank battles haven't been this much fun since Kursk. Number 42, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Tournament Fighters. Told you I'd give it a 90%. Tournament Fighters is great fun and a worthy bedfellow to Street Fighter 2. Now, it doesn't have the polished look or feel of SF2, but get down to the shops and give it a try. Number 41, Donkey Kong Country. A fine game in its own right, and everybody who buys it will be pleased with it, but not as pleased as they might well have expected. Number 40, Legend of the Mystical Ninja 2. An utterly compelling and fantastically entertaining game that's a worthy sequel to its classic ancestor. Number 39, NBA Jam Tournament Edition. NBA Jam was good. This is better. But only due to the odd tweaks. Fans of odd tweaks would do well to give it serious hoop jam and consideration. Whatever that means. Number 38, Plock. This is ugh, a feel-good game, and it's great. Even if your shelves are brimming with cute platform games, there is sure to be room for one more. Number 37, Super Punch-Out. The boxing game equivalent of Street Fighter 2. True, it doesn't have a two-player mode, but I guarantee that what it has elsewhere is more than enough to keep you happy. Video game boxing was never this good. Number 36, Mortal Kombat 2. A real improvement over Mortal Kombat 1, and a potential classic. It's more than just blood that makes this worth a look. Hurrah! Number 35, Kickoff 3. 
This answers the question at the top left of the page with a resounding yes. We were skeptical at first, but this is Brillo stuff. Huh. I wonder what the question at the top left of the page was asking. Hang on, let, let's see if Lorne knows. Hey, Lorne, are you there? Lorne? Uh, it's the series finale. Where'd he run off to? Oh, here's a guy on the street. Let's see if he knows what happened to Lorne. Hey, excuse me, sir, have you seen a British guy about yay tall that answers to the name Lorne? If you mean the guy in the black hat, then he just ran by yelling something about there being too many games. Too many games? Hey, aren't you the guy that I met a few episodes back in the Victorian era? How on earth did you time travel to the present day? I don't know. How did you travel back to the Victorian era? Okay, yeah, I suppose that's fair. I, maybe we should leave some things unanswered. It's just strange running into you in two different time periods, though. All right, though, I guess I'll see you around. Don't you want to know what was on that page? What? That page you were going to ask Lorne about. Even though I've never read Super Play and honestly don't even know what a video game is, I'm pretty sure the question was something like, is it really true that, contrary to all previous evidence, it is possible to produce a good side-view football game? Oh, okay, and their answer was a resounding yes. Oh, that makes sense. Wait, how'd you know that? Who are you? Cut to commercial. Stay calm. Concentrate on the screen. Number 34, Sensible Soccer. The best football game on the Super Nintendo and likely to remain so for some time to come. Number 33, Assault Suits Valken. An engrossing, clever, and extremely enjoyable shoot 'em up. Fans of Japanese mecha will go absolutely ape over it, while everybody else will simply revel in its playability. Whichever character you fall into, you can't miss. Number 32, World Cup Striker. A beautifully well-rounded title which, thanks to the improvements, is guaranteed a place in the finals this summer. Number 31, Street Racer. Don't bother waiting for Super Mario Kart 2. Go out and buy this instead. It looks beautiful and plays like a good game should. Hey, we like it lots. Number 30, Kirby's Avalanche. Last time we looked at it, we said that consoles were made for games like this. We may now be looking towards the super consoles for next generation thrills, but it only takes something like this to make you realize that good games are all about gameplay. And number 29, Super Puyo Puyo. It's just so incredibly playable is Super Puyo Puyo. In fact, it's the most played game at the Super Play office this month, apart from Tetris Battle Gaiden, of course. The have another go factor is off the scale, and the more you play, the deeper the game will become. Consoles were made for games like this. Number 28, Theme Park. A seminal game making its Super Nintendo debut, and not before time, too. One of the most sophisticated, frustrating, and downright enjoyable ways to kill time ever devised. Number 27, Simpsons, Bart's Nightmare. Genuinely cartoon-like graphics, a weird sense of humor, and bags of playability make this off-the-wall multi-game extravaganza surprisingly successful. It works well because it doesn't just rely on the novelty. There's actually a fair amount to do here. It's the surprise hit of the month. 
Number 26, Earthworm Jim. Beautiful, polished, and big as only 24 meg games can be. Earthworm Jim is an example of how to write a great platformer. Buy it and enjoy it. You can't really fail to. Number 25, Super Bomberman 2. Still the favorite it always was, but with new features and an improved one-player game. A fine addition to your Super Nintendo library. Number 24, Super Castlevania 4. Might look pretty run-of-the-mill, but those who take the trouble to really delve into it will discover some of the best graphics, sound, and gameplay the Super Nintendo has to offer. Number 23, UN Squadron. Hardly an easy ride for shoot 'em up novices, but for experts, it's a fabulous and addictive challenge. Number 22, Flashback, the quest for identity. This time, the stupendous graphics are backed up by a thumping good game. Hooray! Number 21, Super Tennis. Quite simply, the best tennis game ever, and an essential addition to any self-respecting collection. Number 20, World Cup USA 94. This replaces Sensible Soccer as the overhead-viewed Super Nintendo footy game with cartloads of options and super slick play. Number 19, Doom. Making Wolfenstein look like an afternoon tea appointment with an elderly relative, Doom is a heart attack-packed bundle of rapid shoot-'em-up ruthlessness, realized in a style that'll change the way you look at games. And it's on the Super Nintendo, and everything! Number 18, Superstar Soccer. Konami has proved that they can turn their hand to anything and excel. If you've been waiting for the definitive football game to arrive, stop waiting. It's here. Absolute class. Number 17, Pilot Wings. This is a truly original game and a thoroughly good buy. It's got the qualities to keep you playing and looks good enough to convert just about anybody to Super Nintendo dumb. Number 16, Super Bomberman. You need a Super Multi-Tap to take full advantage of Super Bomberman. Get one though, and it's devastatingly good fun. Number 15, Super Metroid. Super Metroid is absolutely marvelous, and you should own it. Number 14, Puyo Puyo Remix 2. It's surely only a matter of time before importers dealing in such highly addictive goods feel the wrath of decent people everywhere. In the meantime, this is the most potent fix of Puyo you can get. Take advantage while you can. Number 13, Wild Tracks. This is the most playable and varied racing game ever. A Super Nintendo without Wild Tracks is a Super Nintendo not worth switching on. Well, almost. Number 12, Star Fox. A fast, smooth, stunningly playable and addictive shoot-'em-up that demonstrates the abilities of the new Super FX chip brilliantly. Fabulous graphics and sound, and well-paced playability all adds up to a real winner. Game of the Year! Number 11, Super Mario Kart. Everything we could've hoped for and more! In fact, this is the sort of thing the Super Nintendo is all about. Sheer perfection. Make sure you find yourself a decent opponent, though. Number 10. The Legend of Zelda A Link to the Past. A Nintendo program game never tries to be anything more than fun, and Zelda 3 has bags of it. Beautifully designed and perfected the way only Nintendo seems to know how. This is a must buy, especially at the reasonable price of £40. Nice packaging, too. Number 9 International Superstar Soccer Deluxe. Deluxe is just that. Every feature of the game has been improved radically, and the combination of fluent but technical play and tactical depth makes it unbeatable. Number 8, Secret of Mana. What can I say? This is... Sob. A beautiful game. I can't think of a better way to spend Christmas, so make sure that Santa slips a cart into your stocking. Number 7, Street Fighter 2. Jump around for Street Fighter 2. It may become one of the world's biggest selling games, but the UK price of £65 is madness when importers are selling the US and Japanese versions for around £45. Basically, this game is fab. Number 6, Super Mario World. An amazingly deep and playable platform game, and a credit to Nintendo. Unmissable. Number 5, Yoshi's Island Super Mario World 2. 
As the best game since Super Metroid, Yoshi's Island is a testament of Nintendo's untouchable design skills. It won't last as long as the ideal, but that's because you'll be so addicted scrabbling through the thing. How it's gonna be topped, I really don't know, but I'm looking forward to seeing it happen. Number 4, Final Fantasy 3 a game to rekindle any Super Nintendo owner's romance with their machine. Too slow paced for some, perhaps, but those willing to put in the effort will be rewarded with a gaming experience of quality all too rarely seen. Number 3, Street Fighter 2 Turbo. Street Fighter 2 Turbo is the Rolls Royce of beat-em-ups, an essential purchase for fans of the genre and a strong contender for the greatest video game ever. A must-buy if there ever was one. Number 2. Super Mario All-Stars Come on, you know what this bit's gonna say, don't ya? Buy this cart. Now! And finally, at long last, Super Play's number one game. Super Street Fighter 2. A king amongst all pretenders. Throw away those Capcom gripes and buy the best beat-em-up the Super Nintendo has ever seen. So, what did we learn from this Super Play series? Well, many have pointed it out in the comments already, but I learned that the British were a lot looser when it came to what they called beat-em-ups. I don't know, maybe it's because I grew up with GamePro and EGM and well, every other American magazine telling me one thing, but I'm of the mind that a one-on-one -on -one fighting game and a beat-em-up are two different genres. I mean, there are fighting games like Mortal Kombat and Street Fighter 2, and then there are beat-em-ups like Final Fight and Super Double Dragon. Super Play, well, they used beat-em-ups a whole lot more liberally, and it threw me off every single time. Speaking of games they called beat-em-ups, it's interesting to see the difference between the British critics and their American counterparts when it came to Super Street Fighter 2. After three different Super Nintendo releases, a lot of the American critics were tired of Capcom milking their fans. I mean, in comparison, EGM's four critics gave it an average of 7 out of 10. Super Play didn't seem to have any of these complaints, which is why you see it top in this list. You may not have seen this particular version running away with it, but admit it, who didn't see a version of Street Fighter 2 winning this thing? I mean, it's arguably the most important game on the system. And you know what else is important? You. That's right, you're important. Without you watching this series, I wouldn't have been able to make it. I loved reading the comments from episode to episode, especially when people were flipping out about some of Superplay's more dubious decisions. This is one of those projects I've been wanting to do for a while now, so you have no idea how excited I am to finally have completed it. And you know what? I have a hunch that it's going to be one of those series that people just keep on discovering year after year. So I'm eager to see all of the future comments. Look, I really do appreciate you sticking with me on this journey, and I hope you have an incredible new year. For me, I need to get off this island. Every day I wake up with a craving for fish and chips, and I'm starting to notice myself yearning to stand in long queues. I think that's a sign that I've been here too long. So, I'm just gonna board that boat over there and paddle my way back to the good old U.S. of A. See you next year, everybody. <laughs> so... Away. Don't leave, we, we still have more work to do. What do you mean, Lorne? We counted down all 600 Super Play reviews and crowned a winner. I'm sorry, but it, it's time for me to leave. No, no, sir, we, we only did half the job. I've, I've seen the future. Wait, hold on, you have? How? I, I, don't ask, it's, it's better that I don't answer. The, the, the point is, the only way off this island is if you complete the countdown. Superplay's top 600 was just a warm-up because your true test comes when you count down Mean Machine Sega's top 900. Oh, no! Hey, thanks for watching this final episode of Superplay's top 600. If you liked what you saw here, then, well, I guess I should apologize because we're out of episodes. But don't worry, we're going to be back next year with Mean Machine Sega's Top 900, as well as a look at what 1990s critics thought of the recently released Nintendo Switch Online Expansion Pack games. 
Now, here's the question I have for you. What is your favorite Super Nintendo game? After going through nearly 600 titles, I think it's fair to say that there are a lot of good ones to choose from. So I can't wait to see your picks in the comments below. In other news, we'll be back next week with some 2021 review cleanup. Ugh, I have a bunch of games I've been needing to review, but the Super Playlist is just taking over my life. If that sounds good to you, then I strongly recommend you click that subscribe button and support what we're doing here. Until then.